The Tainting Love Network presents It's Getting Drafty in Here with Magnificent Stan, a show about nothing. Well, what's the show about? About nothing. With special guest. We're on the clock. And when are we sending in the ticket? I already sent the ticket. Hello, welcome to episode seven of It's Getting Drafty in Here, presented to you by the Tainted Glove Network. I am your host, Magnificent Stan, otherwise known as Brian, and today is Tuesday, January 24th. I literally just had to look at the clock on my computer to confirm the date. It's January 24th, 2023. <laughs> Today's episode, we're going to be drafting certain characters and aspects of The Sopranos, the David Chase uh crime drama mega mega hit um so yeah we're gonna be doing that uh let me go ahead and introduce all of our guests uh we're gonna try a little little something different this time uh as we introduce our guests here today i would like for each of them to mention um exactly how they watched the sopranos the first time i know all of us have watched it probably 56 or 57 times at this point but um if you guys can just kind of mention how you watched it the first time so let's go with our first guest king nam how you doing buddy I'm good. Thanks for having me. No problem. No problem. Um, so I uh, probably watched it later than everybody else in this group. Uh, I did not watch it for the first time until right around the summer of 2014. I successfully <laughs> staved off every single. You're such an asshole. Whoever put that up. There. Uh, <laughs> any spoilers? I had no clue how it ended. Anytime anything came up, I was like, that's a show I'm going to watch. And I immediately turned the channel or changed the radio station and ignored anybody that would ever talk about it. And I made it all the way through to the end without ever hearing a spoiler. So, wow. Wow. That's, that's impressive. That's a, yeah, that is impressive. It sounds like total bullshit. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Amy can back me up. All right. Uh, now returning uh, for what is this your third time now, Yumper? Third or fourth episode? Yeah, it's my third time, I think. It's our right. buddy, Tom Yumper Garcia from the Yumper and Spo Show. What's up, buddy? What's up, my guys? Uh, first time I saw Sopranos, actually, my aunt and uncle were really, really big fans. Uh, I used to go stay by them. They actually lived in Orland Park, which is kind of funny because I live in that area now. Um, and I would stay with them on the weekends every once in a while. And me and my uncle, he, he owns a store in Southside Chicago, Casey's Hardware. So I would go work with him and then stay the weekend. And we would... Um, he would, they would always watch The Sopranos on Sunday. I was like religious to them. So I would watch some episodes here and there. And then when it started airing on A&E is when I started really getting into it. Um, it was after the series run and it was without swearing, which is why I can't really watch shows on like FX and A&E when they don't have swearing in it. <laughs> so my buddy actually had all the box set. And when I would work, I would go work my job, go to school, work my job during college and then come home. And I would knock out, I've noticed I knocked out all six seasons within like three weeks. <laughs> and Damn. I've been hooked ever since. Like, um, that's awesome. My favorite show of all time by far. Awesome. Awesome. I, I think that's, uh, that's a go for pretty much everybody in this room. It's probably their favorite uh, drama of all time, I would say. Uh, all right. So, what do you got, buddy? So, um, you know, The Sopranos was a thing that my family would get together on Sunday, Sunday nights and watch. And, we would take turns making different dinners and having dinners catered. Um, and I remember the big one was from, you know, a restaurant that was popular in the neighborhood that my family is from. Like we would have Nuevo Leon catered in when Nuevo Leon was still like a thing um, before the owner burned it down for insurance money. Um, but uh, <laughs> Allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly, Was yeah. it owned by Artie Bucco? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 sound, it sounds like something straight out of an episode, but... Um, uh, but yeah, no, we would we would get together and, and have dinner and then like bullshit and talk about the episode. But um, uh, it's just a, like my dad is one that introduced me to all this shit, just like all the movies that we talked about. And it's it just hits it hits differently than anything else I've ever watched. And I love it. Right on. All right. And finally, uh, from the 108 legend beef loaf. What's up, buddy? Brian, what's up, man? Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm 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 happy to break my cherry in front of you fine looking gentlemen tonight. Uh the way I got into Sopranos is kind of weird. I started watching it at the end. So season six or the the the, the broken season six or whatever, in there is when I first started getting in on it, kind of live action going. And then after it was over, 
my uh, mine and Treasy's cousin, well, our play cousin. We're not, we weren't exactly, but you know how all Mexicans are cousins, like Yump, you know that shit. So what? My play cousin, he he had the box set, and he's like, you got to watch this from the beginning. You've got to go back and 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 rewatch the entire series. It's so great. And so I, I that's when I I did that, and I absolutely loved it when I went back and watched the whole thing, kind of in in one shot. And then ever since then, I do rewatches. I know we were talking about this before we got on here. But I'll rewatch just an individual season that I want to see. You know, I, wa- I just want to see, uh, you know, Ralphie and Pio Mai and all that. If I just want to watch, you know, season four or whatever, right? that, that's, then I'll hone in on that and I'll drop it. I won't always do a full rewatch. So, like, I, like you guys are talking, it's like maybe your favorite. I can't tell if it's exactly my favorite, but it's definitely my most rewatchable series. Uh, it always has been. Cool. Okay. So uh, for me, it was actually, it was a family thing. We, uh, we watched my, I was still, when it, when it first aired, I was, what, 18, uh, still living at home with my folks. And we, we would watch every Sunday. It was like a, it was like a, a, a routine that every Sunday we'd watch the Sopranos and kept going on and on and on. Um, the last couple seasons, um, we kind of drifted. We didn't, we didn't do it as much, but, uh. But yeah, it was one of those shows that you watch with your family, and even even though even though it had that kind of subject matter that was a little uh, little dicey, it still uh, it still worked for everybody, you know. Um, it was that it was that family aspect of the show that kind of drawed mom in, and then the the blood and guts is everything everybody else, you know. Um, so yeah, so let's start getting into drafting. Before we start, real quick, I just want to um, we did add some stipulations to this draft. Um, one that I forgot here, I'm going to show you guys this. So one that I forgot that I didn't put on this list is you cannot draft any of the members of the immediate family. So Tony, Carmela, uh, Meadow, AJ, you cannot draft them. I, I figured it would add more where we're, we're talking about more characters and then obviously Tony and everybody would, would end up being part of organic, organically part of the conversation. So, uh, we're doing five rounds. Um, you do need to draft at least one, uh, connected member, one wise guy, uh, a wife or a gumar. A uh, character that is not part of the organized crime uh, syndicate, and then we're also drafting a an episode. So everybody has to draft an episode, and then they can, uh, you know, as as a as, as another draft, you have like wild card to pretty much draft whatever you want for that last one. Um, so yeah, let's get started, Beef Loaf. Me first. I love it. Uh, I, you know, I totally feel, even though I agree with the ground rules, I'm getting piped that I can't pick Tony Soprano here because it's the one one of all one ones. There is another obvious 1-1 one, one on the board. And you know what? I'm not going chalk. I'm going to let one of you guys go chalk with the other obvious 1-1 one, one here, given our categories. I'm going to go with just my favorite. And I, I wrote a blog about him. The, the actor who played him passed away this year, or la- last year, 2022. Uh, that is Peter Paul, Polly Walnuts Galtieri, played by Tony Sirico. Just an unreal character. Something that couldn't be replicated by anybody else. Uh, you know, and, and a character that came on as the show went, you know, it was kind of like a, an afterthought and he became like one of the main guys on, on the show just by personality and his charisma yeah. and everything that went into making that character and, uh, audiences, including me, it went wild for it. Like, I, I just can't get enough of him in any, absolutely any episode he's in all his idiosyncrasies, everything about him is just so fucking wild that all the drama around him is incredible. His, right, like yeah, the episodes, with, the episodes where he discovers that his mom isn't his mom, like <laughs> yes. some of the fucking funniest things I've ever seen on TV in my entire life. And then he I skips see. out and he cheaps out on building the 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 rides at the Tangerine yeah, Festival. At the fair. It's just, yes, it's just fucking. He's like that's like if it's not Tony, it's Pauly and Beef. You yeah, might have I, already won the draft. And I don't, and I don't know who you who you were thinking of is like the. I'm not going to go with the obvious one. I feel like Polly Walnuts is the obvious one, man. That guy in he, this category, I I think he's the best pick available. But there's another category where there's an obvious one, one like no if you look yeah, at the other categories. Okay. Yeah, no, no I know what you're talking about. He was going to go Pine Barrens number one, one of one. <laughs> I was not, I was not going to go Pine Barrens one of one. Speaking of Pine Barrens, Czechoslovakians. <laughs> <laughs> This house looked like shit. This house looked like shit. Oh, Those two My- played off each other so well in that episode. It was uh it was a match made in heaven. And then and then just just yeah, I, I he he worked with everybody. He he played off of everybody so well. That guy obvious obviously typecast his whole damn career. Yep. Um and he laid into it and he and he hit a home run every time. Awesome. I'm a little awesome disappointed character. that 
Yeah, I'm a little disappointed Yump didn't have the mix it with the relish sound clip, like <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> No, There's nothing a- better in that episode than they've only been out there for the day and it's like they're starving to death. So they got to eat ketchup and raw. Like they couldn't just <laughs> like take the day and not eat anything. Like <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, just the, uh, the thing about Wrapping him is, feet. is uh, <laughs> one of my favorite ones is when he goes to the psychic and he's like, uh, <laughs> was he? That's what this is, you know. Satanic black magic. <laughs> shit. <laughs> That like that whole his whole dialogue his like dialogue and everything he gives is hilarious. The I, I showed you guys the, uh, you know when Tully Blundetto was telling them about his uh Korean partner for his massage ter- parlor and he's like telling them just no to the wise remember Pearl Harbor which had nothing to fucking do with Korea, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he was like just remember Pearl Harbor, like all that stuff is like he's such an asshole he's oh, totally man. heartless. Uh, when Tony's dying he's basically telling her fuck Carmel I'm not gonna pay her. And then when Tony comes out of that coma, he runs and gives her money. And he's scared. Like, it's totally, totally great written character, beautifully played by Tony Sirico. Um, yeah, he was typecast, but he was really good at what he did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and the one where they go to Italy and uh Commodore. And yeah, Commendatore. And they're like, You're a fucking Yahoo, you know. And he, and he, Tony's like, like uh, Tony just looks at him dead in the eyes. Well, you shut the fuck up. I'm trying to conduct <laughs> business here. Yeah, he tells them I gotta take a wicked shit. <laughs> Okay, let's go to number two here. King Nam, what do you got, bud? All right, so uh, Polly probably would have been the choice. Um, I'm having a tough time. I'm going to go with the name that I got written down first. I'm going to go with uh, Silvio Dante. I feel like we're going to go hot and heavy on the wise guys pretty early because you don't want to miss out on some of the top ones. And he was there from beginning to the end. He had uh, just when I thought I was out. In the very first season, he's talking like that. And I feel like he was good with Tony the whole way. Like, when he needed to tell Tony, like, to rein it in a little bit, he did. And when he needed to give him a little kick in the butt, he did. I just felt like Syl was a character. Like, like Paulie, for instance, when he went away, he was gone for a few episodes. Syl just always seemed to be there up until the very end. And Yeah, he's the consistent force of the family. He's always there. He was always, you know, up until that last couple episodes, obviously. Um yeah, he was he was always the guy that they always relied on, you know. No Vito Spanafore there. Treasy's upset at you now. Man. You're, you're, you're best. You're gonna take your best fucking buddy. Your your uh, your your cameo buddy. You know. Hold on. First of all, who's to say that Vito is not gonna pop up? During this draft at my you're house. not wrong. We are you're not There's wrong. some popping up that could happen. There's, There's no definitely question. gonna be some Vito Spanafore con- commentary in this one for sure. Also, <laughs> There's a wild card round, so don't worry. <laughs> I think one of the most underrated like storylines was when Tony was in the hospital and Silvio was acting boss, and he got fucking the agita, and he got sick from being the boss for like a week. He's I thought it was just one absolutely one hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, these fucking flowers. Get them out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I listened to the Talking Sopranos podcast. I don't know if any, any of you guys listened to that. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that was great. Steve Shrippa and and uh, Michael Imperioli, and they talked about how you know he was originally going. Uh, Stephen Van Zant was originally going for Tony, the role of Tony, and they just liked him, and he just created this character. He was just like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the hair thing and all this shit, mm-hmm. and they just kind of wrote him in. Uh, you know, after the fact, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I. I my favorite line in the entire series actually is Silvio during the intervention when he's reading it and he's talking to Christopher and he's like, "You were throwing up in the toilet and your hair was in the toilet water." It's disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> uh, my, uh, one of my favorite like scenes with him and actually Polly is when they go to the uh, Jewish guy's hotel and he's got him on the like the countertop. He's beating the shit out of him. He's like, "Tell him Bumpus, Polly. Tell him Bumpus." He's like, "What?" Like, Tom, that means you get nothing. Buckus. He's like, he hits him with the fucking bell. He's like, this is how I say you get nothing. Fuck that. <laughs> like, that whole, like, Silvio is great. He's, uh, can be serious, like you guys said, and he can be hilarious at the time. Like, Steven Van Zant, for a musician, you would think that, you know, he's going to have an easy role. He actually played the role really, really well. And then he went on to do Lily Hammer, which is not as great as Sopranos, but a decent uh, show to watch if you haven't it's watched a it. Good, Lily Hammer it was good, really yeah. good. Yep, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. And you know what? It's funny is, is, um, his wife on the show is actually his wife too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was fun. I thought she did a great job on the show as well. Maybe we'll talk about her again later. But uh, Let's never know. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, let's go to number three here. What do you got, Yumper? 
So, man, this is this will be a tough one because I have two. Polly was obviously my first, and I knew P Beep was going to take him. Yep. Um, so I'm going to have to go with uh, – I can go the easy route. Uh, I'm going to go with Uncle Junior. I'm going to say Uncle Junior is nice. uh, probably, like, one of the most influential characters in there. He actually, you know, played catch with Tony Soprano. He has, like, some of the best dialogue in the show, some of the best jokes. Uh, you're never a varsity athlete. Uh, your sister's cunt. Um <laughs> Just his the whole when he's going through his go dementia, shit in your hat yeah go shit in your hat yeah. <laughs> in your hat yeah yeah when he's going through the whole when he's diagnosed with dementia and he's looking at the TV and he thinks he's on TV with Bobby uh, one of my favorite scenes is when he looks at the TV and the caricature of him from court and he's like what the fuck oh, yeah. and they go to the court and he's just staring the guy down the whole time. He gets like, his hand stuck in the garbage disposal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just standing scary. there for six hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, it, his character is great. Uh, and it's sad what happens to him at the end. But, you know, his arc is awesome. So I have yeah. to go Uncle Jung. Right on. Right yeah, it's a great choice. You know, I, I mean, the show, you, you, the, the beginning of the show gets washed away because of all, you know, all the seasons or whatever. But him and Tony are at odds at the very beginning. You know, it's a, it's a power struggle in the, in the beginning of that show of them. And then, you know, then the bonding and then, the you know, then obviously Junior goes crackers and shoots him later on. But, you know, it's kind of it's kind of wild. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it just shows like how kind of fucked up the whole relationship of them is like he tried to kill him and then he's going by his house wow. to have a dinner. Like, later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was always that was always funny to me. And, and another another thing about just the show in general, and he's a perfect example of it. And we actually, Sfo and I talked about this on the Christmas episode, is like people that can write old people dialogue, it's it's the, the, it's impeccable on that show. They know exactly how old people talk on that show. Like it's the even like the psychological part of being elderly. It's like it's absolute perfection. For sure. Yeah. Um, and Dom Echinese, he's he was actually in. Uh... Godfather 2, which is yeah, another great Johnny movie. Johnny uh, Ola. Yeah, Johnny Ola. Yeah. Uh, and then like even his singing when he does this when he gets up and mm -hmm. drunk and sings at uh Jackie Jr.'s funeral. Like just yeah. like that. Like this the series is so perfectly written in certain ways. Like you can really get into a scene like that, um with everything else from all the killing and the jokes, and then they have things like throughout you like that. Right. Yeah, agree, Jump. That's the beauty of the entire epi uh, the, the entire show because it makes you forget about how terrible these people are, and you kind of live vicariously through them and some of their normal right. life struggles. That you you're stripped away from the fact that they're murderers and killers and, and thieves. Yeah, you're like, oh, Tony, like, oh, Tony's Tony's ducks flew away. That guy's a fucking murderer. Let's, let's, let's not, let's not joke let's take it like, easy. Like, like, the guy's that's... a sociopath. Like, don't feel sorry for him. No, that's killed the guy over awesome. a horse. <laughs> what were you saying, Tom? That stuff is all secondary. I feel bad, and I I like live and die with like all of the yeah. emotions that they feel through this. I don't <laughs> care that they're murderers and cheaters and <laughs> robbers and yeah. all that other shit. Like, I think that's I mean, the beauty of the show. Yeah, I, yeah. I and I I completely agree. And my wife is my wife is not a fan of the show, right? But like, she's like, it's not a mobster show. It's a family soap opera. Like, and yeah. that's that's the great thing about the show is it's more than just that. Hundred percent. So I'm gonna go. Uh, this was actually, believe it or not, this was my one one. So if I'd had the first pick, I would have taken this. I'm getting rid of my uh, my non uh, connected character. Um, he's he's kind of the the bumbling part of the show, the uh, the comedy sidekick almost. Um, I'm going with failed chef Artie Buco. Great pick. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's really. I mean, he's just one of those guys. He always seems like he wanted to be part of something, and he never was. And he and it always kind of killed him. And you know, even though he had like really good support system in his life, like his wife was like, "You don't need this shit, Artie. You you know, we need this." And he's like, "No, fuck that. I want to." I want to invest in uh, almond yak or whatever. You know, like he, <laughs> exactly. like he always <laughs> wanted to be a wise guy, and he never yeah. got to do it. And he he was good at what he did, and he and he was successful. And he instead he just got mixed up in the the nonsense too much. You know, 
and he a total chicken shit like a oh he's up yeah like, like, like uh, the one with, yeah the one with the indians where he hiding in the car yeah but it's when he comes out and he's like yeah, that better not be columbus, columbus. and then they, they fucking throw he's something like, oh. he runs to the car he runs to the car and he gets hit like he's hilarious like his character is just great and he's tony's best friend which is kind of funny and i think yeah, right and, and, that, and that actually I'm, allows him and that allows him to take all these wild chances and do t- t- incredibly stupid shit. Like when he held a gun to Tony about the about the fire at the restaurant, yeah. right? No one <laughs> else gets away with that and rifle. lives, right? Like he comes yeah, out exactly. <laughs> falling exactly. in love with Adriana. Falling in love he, with Adriana. Fall, <laughs> yes, he falls in love with Adriana. He and and, and Christopher was, doesn't get to kill him Benny, because of too. Tony. He whips he Benny's was, ass, goes yeah. to his house, <laughs> drags him out of his house, and beats the shit out of him, and somehow does not die. Like he just like you're you're right brian he so wants to be part of it and he's so lucky that tony's his best friend saves his stupid ass from absolutely everything that he gets his his ass into it's Dude, incredible. he owes tony like fucking like 500 grand and he lets him like <laughs> that part's too funny too when they're in the hospital he's like uh, oh you planned this he's like don't fucking bother him asking for anything he's like i'm just shaved i'm ashamed and like he, then he bails him out in the end like that's crazy and he does like, he's so fucking lame too he goes Phew. My vision is clear, and Tony's like, "Shut the fuck up, man!" Give me your wallet. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um. One. One other scene I want to mention, just because you have to mention it, is when he shoots the rabbit in the in the garden, <laughs> and then cooks it, and then he fucking cooks it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But, like, it. but that was that was him kind of finding himself. He like. You know, he dug back into his what he, he looked at his like dad's old cookbook, basically, and that's when he started making the rabbit, and it kind of like just kind of opened him back up and 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 re-energized him, you know. Um, but okay, let's go with Svo. You got two here, buddy. All right. Well, I'm I'm worried that he's not going to be here the next time around, and his whole storyline character arc, like basically carried the show for a few seasons. Um, the man that loves the movie Gladiator more than anything else in this entire world, I got to go Ralphie Cifaretto. Yes. <laughs> boy. Like, Ralphie Cifaretto, like, like, first of all, Joey Pants is a fucking genius, right? He's and great. he made this character so good. I love Ralphie Cifaretto. I love the storyline with, uh, what's, what's her, what's the, what's the stripper's name? Um, Tracy, 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 yeah, Tracy that's right? right? Yeah. And that whole thing. And, you know, like he's a terrible person. Absolutely terrible person. Yeah, Alexis, I know he's a terrible person. We hate him. But that's what makes <laughs> the story are. so fucking good. So, yeah, Ralphie's my pick. <laughs> nice one, Fitz. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I love Ralphie. I used him as my as my meme for uh, Cody Hoare when he when he was here. Uh, and I was sad when he left and he, and he went over to the Cubs. But you're right; he's a great antagonist to Tony. He is, but he's he's a terrific earner and really smart. So they can't kind of get rid of him, right? They're they're at that tough spot where they want to kill this guy, but he's such a damn good earner. He also is the one who sets off uh, Jackie Jr into a spiral by telling him the story you know so like he's got kind of a all of that going on he's he's with uh you know he's with uh, jackie april's wife and then he leaves her and he goes to janice like he's he's kind of floating around women in the thing it's it's wild yeah and and i I think like you're you're you hit it right on the head beef like he sets off the jackie jr spiral he introduces tony to pio my which sends him down like this like rabbit hole like he is like he's a catalyst for so much good shit in the show. Yeah, definitely. And he like uh he's just an antagonist from the first time we see him. Uh when he, he tries to come and tell comfort Tony during his mom's funeral, uh when they go to his house, and then he's like, You're captain when I make you captain. He's like, Well, I'll turn up my hearing aid to make sure I listen and hear it. So <laughs> like then from there, like even when he goes to confront him about pile my, he's like, What the hell fuck you care about a horse? You eat fucking beef by the tons, you fat head. Like, <laughs> it's just, like, he did not give a fuck. That's the funny part about it. Like Joey Pants is awesome, and he's, the yeah, character he's is awesome. so you you hate the character so much, you kind of like him in the end. He's one, he just turns into one of those guys. The it speech- is interesting too. There's like a pre-existing beef between him and Tony that doesn't get shown because they never establish it at all. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah. right? Because if he is handling the Esplanade, he's like he's got to be one of your top guys, and yet you're holding him back. 
Like you're, you're letting him interface with the New York families and everything kind of directly. And then you're not making him captain. There's like some unspoken thing there that they never went into that, you know, that they're the, the tension setting that up before them. Yeah, I think that was kind of like kind of hinted to when he's telling the story of Jackie Jr. and how he claims he had the clamp before he went to the the did they rob the game the card yeah. game? Yeah, so maybe game, it had yeah. it, maybe it had something to do where they didn't let him go or something. I wish they would have expanded upon it, but yeah, mm-hmm. cool. All right, well, uh, so. I think I think it has to be done. Then I think like if Pine Barrens isn't off the board, I think that's the route that I gotta go. It's the most <laughs> iconic Sopranos episode, and I'm I'm surprised that it lasted. So I'm gonna go Pine Barrens for my episode pick. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's the one I thought was obvious. One one. That's the one I thought. Some, you know, just because the, the 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 discrepancy between the, or the disparity between or the, the gap between the two. Yeah, not that one. I, not for me personally. I like, like I think there's a lot of episodes that are that are tightly bunched there. But I think as yeah. as far as it's well known, when you put this in a graphic, Brian. People who are are voting on the poll are going to say they know Pine Barrens. Like, oh, that person won that category, kind of thing. You know. But I also yeah. feel like picking yeah. an episode this early is like picking a kicker in fantasy football, right? Like, did I <laughs> did I did I blow it? Did I blow it too early? Like, by picking yeah. the episode. But I think it's is, so iconic that you have to go with it. Is Jackie in the room? Because you can call it your paperboy pick. <laughs> it's funny because with my wow. first pick, I was going to say paperboy. Just or mu- or Muppet Christmas Carol. We can call it. <laughs> Real quick side wow. note, um, picking a kicker in fantasy, Robbie Gold has never missed a playoff extra point or field goal, and he has definitely kicked a lot more of them in the playoffs for the Niners than the Bears. Okay, hey, Steve. I mean, hey, Nam, Nam, Nam. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, too. Perfection. <laughs> That's perfect. You make sure use that on every show. I would use that. Yeah, on every show. yeah. <laughs> Shit, I need that. Like man. you know, ninety five percent of the time, like I text with Nam, and I'm like, man, this is a good dude. I like him. And then he says shit like that, and I'm like, why am I friends with him? I'm, I'm the opposite. Five percent of the time, I think you're a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> show, do me a favor, B. Show him your shirt real quick. There you go. You want some of that? <laughs> I almost wore that one tonight. <laughs> yeah. So Pine Barrens. Why don't we? Why don't we get into that a little bit here? Because it's such an iconic episode, directed by uh, Steve Buscemi, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably the uh, the most well. When you like we said, when you talk about uh, a Sopranos episode, it's probably one of the most famous or well known episodes. Uh, it basically shows the dynamic of uh, Polly and Christopher and how well they feed off each other. On top of that, you got the Russian that er- that's been like a conspiracy throughout Sopranos, you know, lore. What happened yep. to him? And it's kind of funny. Like I, as I went into a deep dive, you know, doing this and then just in general because I'm a nerd like that. You know, David Chase actually had a scene in the last episode where Tony walks into Slava's uh, bar and the Russian's sweeping and doesn't recognize him. And the whole thing was Slava found them in the woods and he lost his memory because of the gunshot. But he was going to pay it off. But they, um, they like, I guess everybody else and they're like, nobody cares about that. So, <laughs> oh, that's a but shame. now everybody's like, oh, yeah, they care about it. You know, it's so it's pretty crazy yeah. that it, that could have happened. That, that would have been a nice little cookie to throw to the, the, uh, the fans. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, Let's get into the next one here. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my uh, my wise guy pick off the uh, off of the uh, list here. Uh, I'm gonna go. I I'm surprised he hasn't been picked yet. I'm gonna go Christopher Moltisanti. Um, it's basically the the Robin to Tony's Batman. I mean, I didn't. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to use uh, I we should have went to Roy Rogers, but I can't say that. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> oh man, there's just so much going on with that guy. Like they could have done a whole oh show God. about about just him. I mean, um, they should make a they should make a movie about like his dad or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Christopher, like he, Christopher and Junior were like my one and ones uh, that I was yeah. going through. But I went with Junior instead. But Michael Imperioli, excellent actor. 
-hmm. you feel like he does the great part of making Christopher feel so sorry for himself that you actually kind of like, man, this guy's a piece of shit. But yeah. He's also hilarious. Like he has hilarious scenes when he kills the dog when he sits on it. Uh, that's one of the best. Because he's nodding parts. off. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, he's nodding off. <laughs> um, you, and then you kind of understand, like even like even his. It must have climbed under there for warmth. <laughs> 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 yeah, he, no, his relationship with Tony too. Like he loves Tony, but then when the Jackie Jr. situation happens, he basically tells him, "We gotta play by all the fucking rules, and you basically do whatever the hell you want because you don't give a fuck about us." Like that's yeah. kind of sent him more into a downward, downward spiral. Well, and Tony needed yeah. that too. Tony needed someone to tell him, like, "Hey, this is not right. You gotta, you gotta take care of this motherfucker." Mm -hmm. Christopher, also, you get to see the the entire arc of what it's like to be a wise guy. He starts off as kind of at the very bottom. With the rest of the guys, they're kind of roughly in their positions, right? They might get a minor promotion, whatever. He's in the bottom. He works his way all the way the fuck up to like, basically yeah. he's the number two by the time he dies. I mean, I, I know he's, you know, he, I, I don't know if he's officially the number two, but he's the he's the go-between basically at, at that point at which he dies. So like, it's it's rare in those types of, you know, at least in Sopranos, no one else does that. He, he kind of has that arc, you know? Yeah, uh, K Fids puts up a good point there. That episode with the 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 tipping or the or paying the paying the tab at the restaurant. Yes. Oh man. When the guy's a seizure after they hit him with yeah. a brick. <laughs> Not just that. Like even when the future when he when Paulie steals from his father in law he goes Paulie drives on his fucking lawn and destroys. His, he goes crazy there. But yeah, like he has some great lines. Beef like the uh, the even when he's like just starting out and he goes in my thoughts I use positive visual visualization. <laughs> like that. Like that's exactly. like. You know, and then at the beginning when Tony's beating the shit out of that guy and he's checking his car to make sure it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like a brand new Lexus, right? Yeah. It's and brand then, new. And then almost, I like, love when almost like a behind the scenes, behind the scenes when they're making the movie with John Favreau and he's coming up with the dialogue. Like oh, just brilliant so piece good. of the show. Just Christopher's Christopher's when well, they show you like little bits of his script that he's writing and like all the like all the grammar and the and the spelling errors like everywhere because he's just a fucking dumb shit. The guy who had taps on his shoes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let's go with uh Yumper. What do you got? Oh man. Uh so I knew Pine Barrens would be gone. I think I'll hold my pick. I have a couple of them. I can hold for them. But I think I'm going to go with the regular non-connected character. Uh, and I'm going to go with the person that is on the other side, but ends up actually kind of helping them out. And that's Agent Harris. Good pick. Uh, good one. I had that's him on my pick. list, too. Yep. That's a good um, pick. He comes by as a likable guy. I mean, you know, he's and then you see him going through his own turmoil with his family and his wife and then. Then she's like, fuck it, I'm just going to help Tony out. But, you know, he's like one of the few FBI guys that kind of feels bad for the how they treat Tony. You know, evident by when they play him the tape for his mom, and he just kind of puts his head down because he knows it's kind of fucked up. Yeah. But a uh, like, total likable character. Um, he's human. You know, like yeah. like a lot of FBI agents, they, you know, they're, they're going to look at the, they're going to look at an organized crime boss and just think, like, you're a fucking monster. I don't have any opinion. But he like yeah. he yeah he actually had like a like a like a soul I guess you could say well, even like um when they go to, when he first meets him he knocks on the door and tells him you want to let your family know instead of us busting in yeah and like just stuff like little things like that like he he's at least giving the common courtesy yeah he knows that he's a bad uh, you know a criminal but we're still gonna treat you like a human being mm -hmm. which I always liked yeah and then he got he got like food poisoning or some virus in Afghanistan and that was like a yeah. whole thing like that was like all just they wanted a was character. a pork sandwich. Damn. That's a fucking good. That's a good pick, Yumper. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Christopher, hope pick. he died. I hope he fucking dies from that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go with the next one, King Nam. All right, um, hmm, I'm struggling with this one. I think that I'm gonna have to go with my wild card. <clears throat> I went down to the bakery earlier and picked up some fresh cannolis <laughs> with uh, my buddy Gino, who is actually Vito. Vito. <laughs> I am going to go with Vito. So Cherizi jumped the gun on me a little bit there, but <laughs> I needed Adam to boy. grab, I needed to grab Sill in the first round, but I knew Vito would stick around a little longer. That's and, uh, good value in the second round. 
Yeah, I agree. I gotta go. I gotta go with Vito, uh, not just for the cameos that he's done for me, which is gonna add about five years on the back end of my career for how expensive they were. <laughs> but I mean, he's got <laughs> such great moments, like when they catch him in the bar and he calls Sill at three in the morning to feel out if he heard anything, and then just the whole on the run and all that. Like it was great. I, one of my favorite craziest scenes is when he sits down with Tony when they've been looking for him and he's been on the run and he just goes, my brother's over there. And Tony goes, what the fuck's that supposed to mean? And he goes, nothing. He's just there. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, the guy's like, I don't know. so yeah, I got to go with Vito. Right on. That's Vito's got, one, I... Vito's got two moments that I absolutely love. One is the first time he's in a show, he's a completely different character in the fucking bakery that Christopher takes his gun out, right? Yeah. He's not even yeah. Vito. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the second one is when Tony is shot, he's like, you know, with all this weight loss, I'm a healthy man. I should be next in line for the throne. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. <laughs> One of my, uh, my my one of my favorite parts about Vito is his dialogue when his brother gets hit in the head by Mustang Sally and they're in the hospital, and so he's like, "Vito, you won't say anything, right?" He's like, "You know my mouth's closed, Tone." And then fucking Ralphie's like, "Except that there happens to be a salami sandwich lying around." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking Ralphie. <laughs> but yeah, Vito is a uh, another character. Like, and you know, this is they kind of explored areas that were kind of out there. You know that people deal with every day like well if there was a homosexual in in the mob and they added that aspect and you know tony didn't give a shit until people started giving him shit about it like yeah. he all he cared about was the money he was making because he even right. tried to say the amount of money that guy makes and then he tried to use his family to yeah. stop carlo from going out you're gonna take care of his kids like just because he was so greedy about the money he didn't give a shit about everything else He's like, hey, hey, Finnegan, what do you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say, that, that story with, with Finn was ridiculous. He put so much pressure on that poor kid throughout all that shit. I mean, it was terrible. And then also, like, he, he's, like, dealing with his homosexuality. But, like, in one of the scenes he mentioned, oh, you know what? Uh, you know, when, when Christopher was uh, in the hospital, I, I was this close to banging Adriana. And, and shit like that. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what, what the hell? No one believes that. that. Like, come on. Aren't they cousins? Because he's yes. Ricky Aprio's yeah. cousin. And she is That's too, right. Yeah. Or his niece or something like that. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> if it's good enough for Godfather 3, it's good enough for me. Yep. I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't break any, uh, you know. Yikes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a Sofia Coppola incest joke uh, from the Godfather. <laughs> you did it. You did it. I'm proud I got some you. better ones later. Depends on the picks. I got some good ones later on, too. Not related, but, you know. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, let's go to the next one. What do you got, Beef? All right, I'm back to back here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with my, uh, my wife, Gumar, pick first. And I'm going to go with the most uh, volatile, bombastic uh, Gumar that you could pick, and that's Gloria Trillo. Uh, the whole story with her, the fact that she would get that close to the house, get that close to Tony's wife, was just like crazy basic instinct, uh, you know, fatal attraction no. bullshit. Like it was, it was terrifying, and she, she she mirrored Tony's mom in a lot of ways, and and they reveal that kind of towards the end of of their uh, I'll call it a courtship. I mean, it was a, it was it was wild, but you know, like, uh, but she had all the things that Tony was kind of looking for. This more different than his wife uh, an independent woman uh you know out there uh, kind of doing her own things making her own way he seemed to be attracted to that later on in the show more so with the the women that he was dating and, and less just like uh normal arm candy so yeah i i really liked that whole thing and and uh and that it and that there was, it was intertwined too with his his therapy was was kind of a you know a, a weird interesting thing so yeah uh, glory trillo easy pick for me here that's a great pick, uh, Beef. Actually, that was she was like on top of my wife from our list. Uh, I mean, her story like, is great. She's like that's like the the bait, that's like the blatant pick. Like you gotta go Gloria with that with the Guma pick. Yeah, yeah, great yeah, I, pick. That's awesome. I told Amy I was I was struggling on that category, and I said I had to go with her because I wanted one of them that like like Beef said that had she had the she had the biggest balls because she took Carmela 
in her car and drove her home. And then she ripped the uh, London Royal off Tony's head, too. So, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like I mean, right. she gave no fucks. She was like, she was in it. She's ready to go. She was wild. And that was what I was looking for in, in that kind of character throughout the series. And I felt yeah. she nailed that role perfect. And she's also part of, like, probably the most, in my opinion, the most chilling scene of the whole series when Patsy drives her around. Yes. So they go for a test my drive. Face and won't he's be like, the last one you see. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's right. great. <laughs> right. That's, I love the way they do that, too. They do that scene, and then they cut from it. And then they, when they cut back to Patsy, he's like on the phone with his wife getting some bread and stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll pick up such and such for dinner. It's like, that's just his job. He got off his nine to five where he had a pistol in someone's face threatening to blow her tits off. And then he's got to go to the grocery store before he goes home for dinner. I love it. <laughs> totally. And like just like her character in general, like how you were saying, Beef, how Tony was a tractor. Like you kind of feel like he actually really loved her because when she kills herself, he goes after Dr. Melfi and like, Basically, he can't really get over her dying, and he kind of blames himself for it a little bit. Yeah. He tells her you could have helped her, but she said sometimes he can't. He blames her for a little bit, and then you know he dreams about her later in the series. Yeah, you're you're right, and he was really concerned about her because when he found out she was, uh, you know, like Dr. Melfi during one of their sessions, she like paused when he when she found out that he was going with Gloria, and he was like, what you know, what, what's wrong with her? Kind of like he he really wanted to know. He was he was interested in in her personally. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> well, I think, <laughs> I think, I think he saw a little bit of Melfi in her too. Cause she was a successful businesswoman, And also, so there's, there's also that dynamic, not only like he sees his mom cause she's like a lunatic and then, <laughs> Very and then uh, yeah, just a control freak lunatic. And then somebody who's, who's accomplished at least in some capacity, you know? Absolutely. Uh, I right now I got to go with uh, with my next pick. I got to go with my non connected because uh, you guys have knocked out two of my top couple. So I got to go with my next one just to just to save face because I think we're running out a little bit in that category. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna go with Jennifer Melfi. I, you know, uh, being a main character but only being in scenes basically with uh, with the other main characters, kind of an interesting way to present someone like that. And uh, obviously the history. She was in good. She was the wife in Goodfellas, and now she she switches around the role here, and 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 she's uh, she's a therapist. You learn a lot about Tony in their conversations, but you learn a lot about her too. Mm -hmm. And her character is extremely interesting as well. That she's divorced and that she she has an uh, an alcohol problem, and you see that she has problems with her kid, and and it, it's just it's just uh, very much real life. I mean, she has to you know that that's where they they broach a rape scene. Uh, with her in, in the parking lot and just sort of all, all the things that go along with that. And, yeah. and, and as tough as those things are to watch, you know, I'm, I'm glad they, they did bring it through and, and make us kind of like uh, feel it with it. So I, I, I thought she just did a great job. Great character. I didn't realize she was in Goodfellas. I only know her from hackers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I heard that she was supposed to be cast for the wife in Sopranos. And she was like, I I've done, done that i'm, I'm yeah, gonna been do there, a done that. yeah she did, she'd have been good at it but edie falco won like 37 emmys for that show and i mean you <laughs> yes. know, can't yes well i mean come on you know i i i fucking hate the character of carmella but i i love edie falco's interpretation of it is absolutely flawless totally agree yeah dr melfi's a really good pick of beef um the just her, her whole thing with the rape scene and then you know, she kind of, you feel bad for her. And then at the end, when she realizes she can have Tony basically take the guy out, That's it kind of empowers her. Like, it, yeah. and she even tells, um, I think she tells her therapist, like, or somebody, I know I can crush him like a fucking cockroach now. Like, just having that opportunity and, you know, the knowing that I have that power makes me feel better. Right. Yeah. It's like she got, it's like she got everything that was taken away from her back almost. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then she ends up, you know, she's actually one of the smart ones. She cuts off the relationship and she realizes it's just going in circles. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's harmful for her as, as much as it is for him, you know. Great pick, Beef. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's, I didn't think she'd last to the third round. That's, uh, that's interesting. But, uh, all right, uh, Nam, what do you got? I'm looking at this and I think I need to cheat a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you already got your wild card out of the way, so you're gonna. So, picks have been tough, man. This is this has been tough already. This could fall under the wife category or the not connected category, but it could also not 
fall under either of those. So I'll let you guys be the judge. I'm going to go with uh, Liv Soprano. Ooh. I feel like I Boy, think she you. falls into the not connected category because even though she knows what's going on and she essentially kind of was running the show and pulling <laughs> the strings of Junior, she never outright yeah said exactly how she wanted I would put to her I would put her in the wife category I would, I would too Brian well, and, and the reason being the is that'll make the rest she, of my draft a lot easier too then. she kind of called the hit on Tony basically yeah you know she's a she's at least a 50 50 partner in that hit so I would put her on the wife uh wife side of this she's, but how did she actually so say that though like that's why well she tells Junior everything about what's going on with all the captains meeting there but also even Tony mentions when he um talks to Dr. Melfi that his dad was a strong guy and she nibbled him down to a nub. Yeah. Uh, she yeah. has that personality. Like she, they, even in the flashback scenes, she, when he has a chance to get out and make money with become a millionaire, she tells him that she's going to smother his kids if he doesn't stay, which is crazy. Cause like, she's very controlling, very manipulative. I think uncle junior said it best when he says she's like a woman who comes up from the sewer, the Virginia hand of the one arm and uh Rolex in the other and cries the blues. Yeah, cries poor, she ain't yeah. got no bread. <laughs> yeah. like, it's perfect. I love that. I love so great what character. category she was, is she going under then? I would say wife. Wife okay. Kumar. But that great character. Absolutely, Absolutely. great character. For Young sure. Snow, do you guys agree on that? Yeah. I mean, and I and I I man, what a good pick. Like the, yeah, none of the, this show doesn't exist if it's not for her. Right. Like it's all about Tony's issues with her. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> The uh, yeah, the first probably. time that I watched the show, I absolutely despised her. And like, I honestly, like when she died in the show, I was like, this is good because she was a horrible, horrible person. And every rewatch <laughs> that I've done, I love her more and more. I could not have done like a bigger flip on her. Like she is incredible in the show. She's the antagonist in the show full of antagonists. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, she... Are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like she had a bigger, she had a bigger role in the the series too. She was supposed to be uh, testifying against them before she yeah. passed. Hmm. That would have been a big story. They had to switch yeah. it all around when she passed away. That's like for the airline ticket thing, right? Yeah. That's what she yeah. was going to testify. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, her character was beautifully played. In. Like it's just like you hate her so much, and you understand why Tony has that love hate relationship with her. But that was a good pick, Dom. Yeah, excellent. Pick. Absolutely. All right, Yump, let's uh, let's go with yours, bud. All right, I think I'm gonna hold off on my episodes. I, I think I have a few that can pick. So I'm gonna go with a Gumar, or could have been wife. And I can't believe she's still on here. I'm going to Adriana for my round three. Uh, nice. Christopher's love thing. Uh, also a rat. That was, that was my next pick. So uh, uh, also a rat is right. Yeah. And suffer of irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> I was like, you, I'm surprised you told everybody that it's supposed to be personal, but it, you know, um, she's great character. You know, uh, she loves the glamour. She knows what Christopher does. She even asked him like, when are you going to get made? And they're fucking smoking hot and snorting crack, uh, cocaine, the furio, uh, like she's great. Um, yeah, the IBS <laughs> Alexis. Yeah. That, that shit was so funny. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It was so perfect. Yeah. Just a great character. Um, she, I, I, could, she defines that whole like genre of like that New Jersey, mm -hmm. you know. She was, and she was in just Sons a of Anarchy, and she was fantastic in Sons of Anarchy she too. Was, yeah, and one of the characters that everybody got sad about when she got killed. Everybody, there was there, they still really kill her because they showed it off screen. But you know, we know she's dead. But everybody was really sad when she died. Yeah. That makes me really surprised that a certain episode hasn't been mentioned yet because that's probably the second most famous episode. <laughs> Well, I, I like, too, that she's a total ride or die, man. She is willing to put up with all the bullshit. She is in there with Christopher, like, all the way, you know, until the FBI uh, gets uh, right up her ass. And then, and she's smoking hot. This show doesn't have a lot of, like, super beautiful-looking people in it in general. It just has kind of regular-looking people top to bottom. She's a smoke show right in here. And so we need a little bit of that. I'm sorry. I'm going to offend. Uh, I'm going to offend people in the comments. But it's good to have that in the show. Her and Janice. Janice. Janice yeah. Pavardi. Pavardi is definitely a smoke Pavardi, show. Pavardi, that's right. Pavardi yeah. is definitely a smoke show. 
Oh well, my God. talk about oh, talk about talk about a segue. Uh, my <laughs> my draft pick. <laughs> I uh, I'm gonna go with Janice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's my my wife Umar because uh, she was a couple of them, you know. Um. Yeah, I I, I hate Janice. Like everybody hates Janice. That's, everything that, about yeah, her. The best part. I hate her, and like how she manipulates everybody and. Basically goes from one thing to another. She like traps poor Bobby Bacala, drives like terrorizes his kids with the Ouija board. <laughs> <right>. Like fucking, <laughs> she she basically she, like comes... AOL chats them and then has them do it. Yeah, it was fucking terrible. yeah. Just like her character in general, like she's telling Tony she hates her mom, and then she comes back and cries and she dies. Like it was the worst thing ever. Like she's a total. <laughs> she tries to shit. make everybody talk at the thing, and they're like, "We fucking hate this woman. What's wrong with you?" <laughs> Which is kind of funny because in the end, she actually turns into Livia. That's what well, she's turning I into. She's, I right. think she's a combination of Livia and Johnny Soprano. Like she's I mean, a tough, tough broad, and then she's she lets and then she's like a manipulated gun to her manipulated fucking head while they have sex. It's not loaded. <laughs> you know what though? She does yeah. whack him out when he goes too far. He goes yeah. too far with her. She takes it into her own hands. She don't Ooh. need her big brother to clean up that mess. She goes in there and gets it herself. I, I, uh, yep, you said I hate her so much. I was thinking I hate her so much that I fucking loved her character so much. I couldn't wait yes. for her to be on the screen because she was going to do some shit that was absolutely. Re- she was going to steal a leg if she needed to, so she could keep her fucking records. I mean, like all anything you could think <laughs> oh my of. God, that's the any that's possible thing you think of. This bitch was going to do that. It was. A, I love. I loved her so much because of that. Because she was just ruthless every step of the way. Just even like there's scenes when she goes to the house after Meadow has that party and the music she's listening to is like, ah, she's like, like shit like that. Like she manipulates Meadow and then she gets pissed off because they threw up all over the house. She's like, when are you going to punish that kid? After she told him not to punish him. Right. She's like, like you're totally right, Beef. Like I hate her so much that I love the character. I just like I did tutorial played her perfectly. And like, she's great in Deep Blue Sea as well. Yes, she's also in uh, Sleepers. She plays the lady who um, oh. drinks too much wine, and I couldn't the identify Wilkinson that. Wilkinson Home for Boys. Yeah, Sleepers? okay, I remember that. <laughs> you know, I had to get that in there, Swole, for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Yum's my partner. <laughs> she beats the shit out oh, of the God. lady at the soccer match. That was one of my favorite. <laughs> ones. They, show, they show her yes. running away. They yeah, yeah, running away from the cop. <laughs> but they don't already got her. What a great episode. Oh, <laughs> Okay, Svo, last pick of round three. All right. Um, I'm going to get my character that's not connected out of the way, and it's probably my favorite storyline in the whole show. But I'm going to take the Terminator himself, Robert Patrick, or we call him David Scatino. Yes. That's um, great great it's choice. It's my favorite storyline in the whole show. You know, he's got to sell the, the SUV to Tony to cover his debts, and it leads to a whole <laughs> thing with Meadow and the airline tickets. Uh the coolers, Richie's like, fuck that. I want them blue. Or does he say no, red? Does red. He want he red. red. I, what like, I want them red. <laughs> We're not going to pay him anyways. I, yeah. David Scatino's character, like, such a good storyline. And so helpless. And, like, Tony just takes total advantage he of just, him. And he was like, you knew this was going to happen. He's like, it's kind of what I do, man. <laughs> it's my business. He, says yeah. to, he tells him, this is my business. I love that episode as well, uh, as well because... I like when they dig a little deeper into the actual enterprises of what the organized crime is doing. And so this one was just a deep dive and a total bust out, right? It was just like he knew he could trap this guy and get him under his thumb because he knew he had that store and he knew they were going to vulture the shit out of it. So if things went wrong, he was going to get all of that. He was going to get his hands on absolutely everything. And to watch them do it, like in the whole show, was interesting to me because you don't always get to see all of that stuff in these things. And the fucking poker game where Richie discovers him, he's like, oh, you got right. some balls, man. Like, And he's like, like, it just turns into a whole thing and everybody leaves. And it just so, so fucking good. I just got to the part of my rewatch where Richie Aprile shows up for the first time and I know it's coming and I'm excited. Like, I know it's coming. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Love it. So yeah. let's talk real quick. I want to talk about the about, about those poker games. Isn't it amazing that they were able to get Frank Sinatra Jr. to do those scenes? Like, like Frank Sinatra Jr. just laying into like, yeah, my dad was a fucking was part of organized crime. Like, what, what? Like, what like, is that? Not only that, but there's other poker scenes later on in the show with fucking Lawrence Taylor yes. and David Lee Roth. Roth. Yep. Like, it's so good. It's so yeah, good. it's hilarious. Like those that the whole poker scene with David Scatino is pretty funny too. Like the, even the beginning, him and Artie are playing. Artie's beating the shit out of him at poker. I gotta go home. Charmaine, Charmaine will kill me. But like uh, Skakino is such a uh, you know you feel sorry for him and 
but he's like he's a piece of shit person like he's he really a terrible is terrible person then he comes um, back later he couldn't and he's even a hang himself. Yeah. he couldn't even hang himself over the pool table right like he's <laughs> that much of a fuck up he was and, like no go ahead fixing the light it glares off the eight ball when i shoot <laughs> 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 He, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite parts about him, uh, the people you're saying, is when he comes, like, Tony's scared he's gonna get discovered for this murder. And he comes out, he's like, I told you it's gonna start. They're, they're, they're putting a lean on me. He's screaming. And Tony's like, Go back in your fucking hole. Oh. <laughs> he, like, runs he's like, away. He's, he's sleeping like, in a tent with, like, fucking pizza boxes and dirty clothes. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but Tony's like, Davey. I'm sorry, you're doing a great job. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Yeah, you apologize still real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's it's such an awakening when, like, they're friends, like, their kids go to high school, and then he doesn't pay enough of the money when he goes to the to the, the sporting goods store, and he beats the ever-loving shit out of him. And it's like, I part of me wasn't expecting, because you're like, well, he'll play nice, because this this is a dad of, of one of, of Meadow's classmates. No, he will not. This is his fucking business. He ain't playing yeah, nice. He's going to get this money. <laughs> exactly. right. Yeah, Tony doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, uh, I just had some bad luck. He's like, it's not getting better. And he smacks the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Spo. Let's go uh, next one. All right. Well, I think um, I think I got to go Guma and get that out of the way. And I'm going to go with the, the Guma that Tony wouldn't fuck till he realized that he, did, he, re he realized she didn't fuck Ralphie. He wouldn't have sex with Valentina until yeah. he realized that she wouldn't he wouldn't she didn't fuck ralphie so i'm going valentina la paz and i know um alexis was giving me shit you better not draft her but that's a good pick that's a good pick because good pick she was a catalyst I for agree. a bunch of things agreed and she falls into the category of like woman who has a career together and is kind of self-made and, and tony really likes that and then also the fact that Tony is vulturing a woman from another one of his guys, which he routinely does. And you're right. Uh, so he he says that, but it's only after he fucked her the first the time. First like after time. you know, he, he already fucked her. He just wouldn't fuck her a second time. Is yeah. what, what? Oh yeah, no, it's it's complicated my business. And I can't. Went, you know, he went to go get sex advice from his fucking sister. He's like, so what was it like <laughs> fucking Ralphie? Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. He, well, what did she say? She he he he. He tops from the bottom or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a sense. Oh, oh my god! god. Bottoms from the top. That's what it is. <laughs> and then, and then Tony, of course, breaks up with her in the best possible way. Her face is burnt to shit in the hospital, and he's just like, you know what? This isn't working out. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting back. I'm getting back my wife. Bills, but I think yeah. this has run its course. Yeah, and then she's like, I'm gonna kill myself. He's like, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, Valentina is like really, really attractive. Um, but yeah, totally. Yeah, and then, she like, is. They had her like do basically like uh, pranks on. You know, she did put Ralphie in the horse shit, and then Tony yeah. with the salt. The salt shaker at breakfast. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good pick there as well. That is yeah, a perfect like one. one yeah. Yeah. She's a good one. Um, I'm gonna go. I was thinking about doing my episode now, but I think this one's gonna sit around. And I got a couple that I really like, so. I'm going to go with my wild card and uh, we were just talking about him and I'm going to go Richie April. Oh, I love it. Love Richie. <laughs> Veal Parmesan sandwich. <laughs> Fuck you. Every, every time my old man comes over and he's going to watch this tomorrow. He promised me because he loves the Sopranos, but he's got to work at like 4 a.m. So like every time he comes over and I take, I take like, you know, I take his jacket or whatever. He's like the jacket. The jacket. The jacket. <laughs> the jacket. I made that meme for you, Beef, with uh, yeah. Greasy. The jacket. I, I love it. <laughs> it's so funny leading up to it, too, because he's such a pain in the ass to Tony. They're bickering all the time. He's like, this is his fucking peace offering. He's going to give this to Tony. This was like a big deal when they were kids. And then right. he comes over another time to drop off some tripe. And then the the the, the cleaning lady's husband's wearing the jacket. The whole lot cleaning lady's husband has it. Yes. Yeah, and then he um... the look on his face was priceless. <laughs> he didn't yeah. know what to do. He just Tony, had to leave. Tony gives him the biggest insult with "Don't look at me with those Manson lamps." <laughs> his <eyes. laughs> Like his, yeah. his son is like a ballroom dancer. Like just like really weird stuff about that guy. Um, yeah, just all the all the shit he did to Beansy is the best though. 
Totally. Oh my like god, that. he was fucking relentless with that. He's oh a, the he's, fucking dialogue that he had with Christopher. He's like, if you're gonna put my hands on my niece, you give her your last name. Like he gave the shit. He gave him permission to beat as the he, shit out of his niece as, as long as they were married. Him. That yes. was when he met him too. It wasn't like it <laughs> wasn't time. like pulling him aside. It was like shake your hand, like hi, I'm Richie April, <laughs> and then he fucking says that. Yeah, and he actually sets up Jackie Jr. to go down the downward spiral by having him hang around. Because remember, he used to always say, "My uncle Richie was going to do this," and then it became my father. So yeah. And there's a scene where they're talking about the garbage routes, and it's Tony and it's Jackie Jr. holding the umbrella over Richie, and he's like, "See, kid." He just told you to go fuck yourself, <laughs> and we're just supposed to take it. <laughs> yeah. and, and that yeah. guy's fantastic in UHF as one of the the hoods that uh, kidnaps Stanley Spadowski. So that's, there's another guy that's totally typecast. Remember you see him in anything? He's yeah, he's in Shawshank too. Like he's a, one of the prisoners. He is. Like, yes. Yeah, he is. You're right. He's like either a goon or again a prisoner or or in the mob. Like, yeah, like he's a, he's... everything you ever see with him. He's got a brief appearance as a pilot in the Monster Squad. So. Oh, shit. He does. He does. Yeah. Why, Dracula. Oh, oh my shit. God, Nam. Oh, my God, Nam. I love you for that. I'm sorry. I, I'll, you can keep calling me fat if you want. Mark that down. He admitted in front of everybody that he loves me. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure i'll make sure to clip that out and put it on uh, put it good on. idea i really bro. went out on a limb there because nobody knows how i feel about you buddy <laughs> i still hate your guts i know <laughs> oh man sure jan oh man um well marge i don't know i have i have two people i want to go for my wild card and one of them is hilarious they're both pretty hilarious one of them's a crucial member of that I'll just, you know, I'm going to go with uh, Big Pussy Bapacero as my wild card. Ooh, nice. Um, reason being, he was such a crucial member of the first two seasons. Uh, Tony's, but like in the beginning, you kind of thought that he was higher ranked than Tony the way he was talked about. And he turned out to there, him and Tony were like best friends. He Tony goes to him for advice. He basically has the uh, the car shop that Tony puts his, uh, you know, his cuts his cars through. Um, and in the end, he ends up being a rat. But like he had some... Great dialogue. He was mentoring uh, Christopher through the hit with the um, Czechoslovakian. Um, he actually kills the Blackwood kid with Tony to try to save face with him. It, yep. You know, he's just a complex character. But uh, my favorite thing is when he tries to go work for the FBI and he's like, this is the fat man. He's going after some Pokemon cards. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> like, like, then, he um, kill, then he kills the Elvis impersonator. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kills him with a hammer. Because the guy saw him, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, hey, um, Jose, how you doing, baby? Another guy from uh, <laughs> from Goodfellas. You know, he's in the beginning when he's pushing the carts. Yep. You know, yeah, they uh, got they, the uh, the the, the uh, winter coats, right? The fur coats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Pussy is one of my favorite lines in the show. What, what pussy? My pussy? Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> <laughs> pussy Malanga. It's a shame too. He was such a good character. It was a shame that he got killed off before they started making like gigantic money. Like that, like the guy yeah. really missed out on a payday for being such a good character on the show. He still does stuff though on the side, still. Like, yeah, just like tours and stuff. Right. Um. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny you say that because I was actually listening to uh, Talking Sopranos when he was on there, uh, Victor Pastor, and he said uh, when he went back to do like the dream sequences and whatnot, the casting uh, agent, which is uh, Georgina Walker's Christopher Walken's wife, yeah, told him he's like, I don't know how much I should ask, and she said ask for as much as you want because you built this and unfortunately you weren't here when everything happened you deserve all of it yeah so he oh, said he cool. really appreciated that and he goes they always took care of him when he went back to kind of make up for him not making that big money when the show became so popular yeah it, it, it's kind of it's kind of brutal great character though yeah absolutely yeah good pick okay let's go uh round four pick four what do you got now so I'm going to go with my episode here. I'm going to go with, uh, I believe, season four, episode seven, watching too much television. This is the one with uh, the uh, the HUD project or whatever, when uh, he brings AJ to the projects and the, uh, oh, yeah. the drug dealers come over and she... I forget what she says to Tony, but he goes, oh, you blow your father with that mouth? That <laughs> and AJ's yes. like, what? Yeah. That's a, is that a real crack hole? Yeah. <laughs> no, so that's a crack hole. Yeah. 
but that's the episode where, where uh, he's driving by and he's crying and they're showing him vulnerable, you know, and he's listening to the shy lights. Fucking yeah. mm-hmm. great song, great choice. Oh. He's cruising and he's crying and he pulls up at the house and he sees that she's banging uh, Zellman again. And he goes in and he beats the shit out of them. And then he the goes to cry like a with bitch. The belt. <laughs> Even though he was just crying, he's telling him to cry like a bitch. And then he walks out and he gives her the little pat on the cheek and just walks out. And I was like, that is such a power move because five minutes earlier, you were sitting there crying in your car by yourself. And I'm just like, you, then you go in and you turn it off and bam, you just beat the shit out of the guy. And then like, she loved seeing that. I know she loved seeing that. But. She left him after that. She was yeah. like, I can't be with this fucking pussy. Yeah. I'm leaving. <laughs> that's a good fucking pick, Nam. Yeah, that's a great episode. I, I, I totally agree. I when you were going down the path, I'm like, here, here it comes. He takes his belt off. And he's yeah. like, oh, Tony, calm. He's like, Tony, calm down. And Tony's like, I'm perfectly calm. <laughs> that just starts yeah. whipping the shit out of him. <laughs> right, Alexis, that's what he tells him. Yes, that's a great pick. Yeah, and she ends up, uh, you know, she gets mad because he, when he, when Tony bangs his, her cousin, yeah, she uh, calls Carmela and tells yeah. uh, about yep. the affair. It sets off the, uh, the whole thing about them. Yeah, Svetlana. That's the that's the one legged cousin. I was thinking about this before the show. I was trying to think which one of you four guys are most likely to fuck a woman with only one leg. I think it's probably Nam, but I, I uh, Svo, it might be you. I'm not so, sure. I, I wasn't. I wasn't 100. percent I let the other guys weigh in if they want to. I, I, I'm not. I'm not forcing you to choose, but I think it's probably Nam. One leg, no, one leg, two legs, no legs. I don't care. <laughs> While you were saying that, I don't in discriminate. My head, I was thinking it's probably me. So- <laughs> <laughs> you made me feel better about my choice. I appreciate as long that. As, now. as long as she's still a little chubby, I don't care how many legs she has. Man. <laughs> hey, B. <laughs> Can you play that? Can I miss that? I missed it too. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. <laughs> I prefer the eye patch. <laughs> oh man! Um, <laughs> Perfect. Stefana was like a badass too, though. She uh, told Janice, "You beach." Like she's about to whip Janice's ass. She didn't give a yeah. fuck. Yeah, Svetlana's a tough broad. <laughs> and then sure. it fucking turned into a Christmas present when Tony had the Russians fucked up. That stole that fucked with Janice. It was like his Christmas present to her. Yeah, he was underneath the reindeer or something. Yeah, him, <laughs> and, him and Furio are fake drunk in the car. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <he'd be> drunk. <laughs> great. That one's great. Yeah. Okay. That's a great episode to pick now. That is that's a yeah, good that's one. excellent choice. All right, beef. So you got what do you got left? You got right. I've got episode and wild card, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go episode first. So uh, this episode I'm picking mainly because it has the best four minutes of Sopranos for my money with action and hilarity out of the entire series. So I'm, I'm picking it for a subset of the actual episode. And so the episode's called The Strong Silent Type. It's season four, episode 10. But the the four to five minutes that I want to isolate is Christopher's intervention, which is some of the funniest shit possible <laughs> on any show ever. The, the the banter back and forth and then the fact that they beat the shit out of him before his intervention, intervention is even complete. <laughs> exactly. It's amazing. They, they, they start talking about the dog, like Cosette, you know, and we talked about earlier, like he, he sits on the dog. And in the kind of a throwaway line in the background, you hear Pauly Walnut say, what was it, barking? Like, like that would be a good reason to kill the dog. Like, <laughs> barking too much? Oh, yeah. That's a good reason to kill that dog. It looked like Tony wasn't pissed off or anything, and then they mentioned the dog, and Tony got fucking pissed. So, like, yeah. Tony, Tony and his fucking animals again, you know? I know my, Christopher my favorite part, too, is the, the guy who runs the intervention is the guy who played Casey Jones in the first Ninja Turtles. Elias Costas. Yeah, Elias yeah. Costas, yeah. Uh, the Jose best, Canseco part, bat? Yeah, best part is... Uh, when he's trying to tell them about like you know intervention and whatnot, he tells Tony and Polly, you know you, you're ten, you're bound to relapse. You know I relapse. He's like, so you're a two time loser. <laughs> <laughs> that whole intervention seed beef is awesome. It's perfect. <laughs> it's it's one of the clips that I go back on YouTube and watch all the time. It's like, all right, I'm gonna queue it up right now. I need, I just need to check this out and laugh my ass off. Yeah, I, mean, it, so. I think we've already referenced it like three times in the episode because when <laughs> Silvio got drafted, I mentioned the the whole like hair was in the toilet water. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and and Polly and Polly's thing is, I don't write nothing down. You're weak. You're out of control, and you're an embarrassment to yourself and all the rest of us. Like <laughs> that's, that's not how this works. So <laughs> memeable. Yes. <laughs> 
nothing to do with the intervention. It's just like, fuck you, Christopher. No, let him take his medicine. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, so yeah. for my wild card, I'm, I decided that I wanted to pick my favorite scam that they pulled Ooh. off. And so we already talked about one of my favorite scams, so I'm going to leave that one out. We talked about the Scatino bust out. I love that. Thought that episode was great, and I thought the, the whole idea behind it was great. So I'm going to pick my other uh, favorite scam that they did, and that was the uh, HUD housing scam. So it connects to uh, the episode that Nam was talking about with Zellman because Zellman was intimately involved. And it's literally just them uh, out to breakfast with with Brian, uh, Carmela's cousin, and he floats this, uh, what he thought was an urban legend to these guys. And then, of course, these enterprising young fellas go out there and go do it. And they get themselves a front man, and they got the doctor in on it with the, the you know, buying the homes, and they got the nonprofit guy uh, scooping in there. And it turns into a big thing with New York kind of as its own storyline eventually. But I love the concept of them, like, just totally enterprising, getting free government money for something. Like, they're, they're normally preying on the average Joe on the street. This one they did a little higher level and preyed on the average Joe right through the tax system. Well, and I think I think that's such a good pick beef because it also shows that Tony was willing to get anybody fucking involved. Like Brian was a nobody. Yeah, Brian right. was just Carmela's like investment investment cousin that wasn't connected at all. And yeah. he's like, he gets him a fucking Rolex at the end. He's like, all I did was all I did was bring it up. He's like, trust me, you earned it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> such a good episode. It is. It was a, it was... It's a great episode. One of the best. Okay. Such a, okay. like a shitless scam, too. Heartless scam. <laughs> I know. Just <laughs> top to bottom piece of shit I, doing it. And every from every angle there. And when and, and it goes down the line, and New York finds out about it, and they want to do it. I mean, they beat the shit out of the appraiser. Like, just an appraiser who's like, appraise, phony baloney appraisal. Who cares? Like, whatever. That guy they, gets his fucking ass kicked multiple times. Well, not just that. So, so many different levels. They rip the house apart for all the copper. They're like, <laughs> right. you want that to come out of your end? And he's like, no, I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, not just exactly. that, though. Like, uh, the, the African-American guy, the um, that's he was in a gang, like a gang youth health group. Like, he helps yeah, them out. Right. And they tell him, basically... You, you work with the gangs. Get them to get, get all the crackheads out of there. So he fucking sends his, the kids in there to they do more work up. for him. Yeah. And then the guy, the the main drug dealer shoots himself. They laugh yes. at him. Yeah. I, yes. Yeah. That's it's such a scene, man. That's a fucked up scene. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm I'm sure I'm sure that 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 scam was actually used many times over the years, but uh, I bet. Yeah, yeah I bet it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. All kinds of HUD stuff that goes on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh nam what do you what do you still have left i believe i'm on my not connected not connected okay so i'm gonna go ahead and lose the draft with this pick but my not connected favorite character is pile my uh <laughs> yes <laughs> the beautiful, it's beautiful. It's, it's on the painting right behind me and even though yes. it's a not connected character i feel like it really had a huge effect on the relationship between Tony and Ralph and absolutely caused all of that problem. And it's just a horse. I think that's also, great. The real, the real life pile, my, uh, whose name escapes me right now, follows me on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> the real reason. It, but I not, but they don't follow beat, but, the, but he doesn't follow beef loaf, right? No, no, no. I'm not on horse guy. I'm out on horses. Beef still has, uh, Bobby follows him. Bobby Bacala, right? Is yeah, Steve Sharippa does follow me on Twitter. That's that's yeah, yeah that's wow. like the biggest star that follows me. It's pretty awesome. That's awesome. So, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so did he just dropped the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, he did. <laughs> it's a character. Yes, I did. No, I, I, should we debate whether or not Piomai was connected? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, fine. That's Tony, a good uh, that's a, that's actually a that's a fair point. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is where I tell you go fuck yourself. Pio Mai had a front owner. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> he was the front. Yeah, I mean, well, and the owner of Pio Mai was a front because it was. Remember when Pio Mai won? Yeah, it, was it was someone it was else the, that took the it was picture. Like, Wasn't it like Ralphie? Cleaning, yeah. right? Was it yeah. Ralphie's cleaning lady or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you won the race. Here, get up here for this picture, like. <laughs> I think we'll allow it, but I think it's it is questionable. I think we could debate it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. 
It was a pawn. It was a pawn. <laughs> favorite, favorite pawn. That's the new. That's the new category, right? <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Um. So for mine, actually, I was surprised these two episodes weren't taken because I actually, it's a tough one. Um. But I'm gonna go go back. Though piggybacking off my pick, I'm gonna go with Funhouse as a. That's what uh, I was gonna take you did episode. Tw- you've done that twice to me, man. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. No. Um, yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just that episode. Like I said, uh, Vista Pastor's character of Pussy was like so you know big, and then you see what he's going through in terms of talking to the FBI. Like, and it all comes to the head at the end with Tony having a food poisoning and having a fish fucking talk to him in a dream, to where he realizes. You know, he has to go check him out. And then when he finds the, the bug in the cigar case, you could tell it broke his heart, but he had to do what he had to do. And Sill's not happy with it either. He goes on top of the, the boat, you know, because they're killing one of their own. All he took yeah. his fucking chain, though, which is hilarious. I, I thought um, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> like the background of like, all the food poisoning and all that stuff. Like, it was just a beautifully made, like visually yeah, awesome episode. Just really, really well put together. Um. You know what? Fuck Teresi. Fuck him for saying that. How how dare he say that about me? Son of a bitch. The only thing that always turns me off about Funhouse, and I, I feel free to throw tomatoes at me, guys. The dream sequences in the show, sometimes I just didn't, I, I wasn't that in on. I just like, this is just too weird for me. I don't get it. Little, Maybe like, I'm a, a simpleton. Birthday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm yeah. kind of a simpleton. I can't, can't stay with it, you know? I, I feel that way literal. <laughs> Like I felt that way when I first watched it, but then as I got older and I rewatched it every year, like the dream sequences, like they mean a little bit more. And when it first came on, I hated it, but the Kevin Finnerty story arc, like I, I despised it. I just wanted Tony back, but it makes yeah. so much sense now, and it was done really, really well. Yeah, that 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 is actually was the one I was looking at too. So it was on my you know picks for drafts was that episode? Like I be like I think I told you this before. Like when my original degree is in psychology, so I always like I. The mind is always something I was very interested in. And I think he knocks it out of the ballpark with certain of the dream sequences. Not so much in Funhouse, but in that episode where Tony's basically trying to find his identity. And mm-hmm. you see Tony Bludetto as the guy who tries to walk him into the house basically to death. Your family's waiting for you in there. And he tries to give away his briefcase. Oh, you know, that you can't gladly leave those things behind. You got to forget the past. Like, yeah, I like his uh, messages that David Chase put in there. I think they were done very well. Sometimes they're confusing, but I thought that overall they were done very well. Stuff, yeah, yeah, and then the does the, now the the part where uh, no, I guess that's maybe later in the season when he gets the the singing fish at the end, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But like when it ties into that episode, you know what I mean? Like, like when he sees it, he fucking kind of freaks out, he makes him throw it away, right? Well, and like, and then, and then it just the, keeps showing up again, you know what I mean? On, like, the, on the boat, he looks at he looks at everybody, he goes. We got any good tequila? And then he starts talking about like an explicit detail about the girls in Puerto Rico. And they're like, did they ever really exist? And it was just, <laughs> it was really fucking good. Really good. Good just, pick, man. Not just that, like the uh the Rolling Stone song at the end of the episode that with the whole montage of Tony lighting up a cigarette at Meadows graduation, you know, that's that's awesome. Like it just a Perfectly ended episode for a Funhouse. I gotta. Wa- I'm gonna. I'm gonna start my my annual watch. I think uh, this week. Um, okay. I'm gonna go. I gotta go. Episode. You stole my episode. Um, this will be the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> Fur- so so beef. I gotta give. I gotta give you credit, man. Furio. That was a great character. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wore my ponytail. I forgot where I was at. I wore my ponytail like down so that I, I would look like Furio, and no one said anything. I'm, I was I'm so sure. Upset. I'm sure we'll briefly. <laughs> I'm sure we'll briefly discuss him when we're done with the draft here. I'm gonna go. So. I'm gonna go with underrated episode, and we talked about it for a second. But I love uh, the episode is called D Girl, and it's the one where Christopher's yeah. hanging out with uh, John Favreau, mm-hmm. and uh, it's like the dial. Yeah, Fukiak. <laughs> Well, like, like they're going, they're in the pizza What's parlor. And he's like, "Oh my god, that thing is still alive!" And he's, like, telling these, telling these just absolutely disgusting stories to John Favreau, and then John Favreau's just like stealing everything. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, it was just, and, he, and he's just a little too much for John Favreau. Like, John Favreau just couldn't. Like, you're, you're. 
I don't want to get hurt. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he scares him when he goes up to the hotel room and they're hanging out. Like he's like, he gets a little too like, oh my god, this guy is real. Is really is a wise guy. I don't want to. I don't want to get too close to him. Yeah, also, Christopher's Christopher's banging his fucking cousin's girlfriend. His girlfriend, yeah, it's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, so that that one I and then like yeah, he goes on the movie set. And you know, like Janine Garofalo and um, you got any more words for me to say? Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I, that whole th- that whole episode was fun. I, I, it's not my one, you know, my one one obviously, but, um, but yeah, it's it's a good one. It's fun. It's it's silly. It's got uh, it's got really good dialogue in it. Yeah, it's good. It's a good episode. It's one I go back to when I'm randomly picking. I, I'll randomly pick that one and, and go uh, feast on it. So I, I love it. Yeah, that's a good episode. It's hilarity in that one too. Just the whole Favreau interaction, how nervous Christopher makes him. It's yeah. a, uh, it's good. Yeah, John John Favreau knows how to knows how to play someone who's like super awkward, you know, like like nervous and awkward. And he tells him, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you can play uh, Joey Gallo. Maybe Vince Vaughn, that guy, maybe, but I, I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah. True story. I, I met uh, John Favreau and, and Vince Vaughn. So after after Swingers, me and my friends loved Swingers when it came out. We were like kind of the right age to. We went and saw it a bunch of times at the theater, all this stuff. So they made the follow-up, and it was a movie called Made, which I don't think a lot of people saw. It wasn't even that great of a movie, but they were doing like a kind of a radio giveaway, and one of my buddies won uh, a chance to go to the meet and greet, like twenty people or whatever. Some radio station we were at Piper, we went to Piper's Alley. He calls me, I'm coming from work. He's like, "Hey, get to Piper's Alley in fifteen minutes. We're gonna go to this fucking meet and greet," and we got to meet both of them. And Favreau was a sweetheart. He talked to fucking everybody. He's bullshitting with everyone. Vince Vaughn was drugged out of his fucking skull. And he's, Vince Vaughn's tall. You know, he's like, he's got to be 6'4 or something like that. He's tall, definitely taller than me. And he had like, he like he came out of this room in the back. He thought, oh man, maybe Vince Vaughn wasn't coming back. He comes back and he had the tiniest fucking little thing of popcorn that he was eating. And he was just like, he was barely talking to anyone, but he's just like standing around eating popcorn in front of everybody. It was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, um, I know a bunch of people that met Vince Vaughn at, um, uh, Casino in Indiana. I forget what's the name. I can't think of it at the top of my head. The Horseshoe? The Horseshoe. Yeah, he was there and uh, they happened to be playing poker and like he went behind one of my friends was like rubbing his shoulders like, oh, you're going to make a good play right now. <laughs> he said he was awesome. He bought him drinks and everything. They said he was a real nice guy. Oh, nice. That's funny because I had the exact opposite experience with Vince Vaughn, but that's for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spo, we got our uh, our last pick here. All right, so I don't even know like what we're gonna put this under. I guess we're gonna call it characters, and it's kind of um they're kind of partners. Um, actually, can we just I'm, we're just gonna call it a moment. But there's a moment when these two p- characters are just chilling at their house. Um, Matthew Bevilacqua and Sean Gismonte are about. chilling at the house, and Furio comes banging on the door, and these dudes are hanging out in their underwear, just listening to music, talking about what they're gonna do. And the song has stuck with me up in the club since ever since I first saw it. And it's one of my favorite moments in the show. Um, they're just two dudes sitting around in their underwear watching music video. And it's fucking hilarious. And I, I laugh every single time it comes to that point. Matthew Bevilacqua's story and character in the show is tragic and fantastic because you know what happened to Lillian Brancato in real life. Uh, but it's so fucking good. Well, even like when they're he's smoking a bong, and then when the, somebody's big guy, he tries to put underwear over the bong. It's so, <laughs> like it's gonna hide it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up in the club. Is he like you? Give me a thousand dollars. Yes, yes, yes. And the guy says, "Have a nice day." <laughs> Well, I can't remember if it's when they're walking in or when they're walking out. Furio t- tells the other guy in Italian, "These guys suck each other's <laughs> cocks." <laughs> yeah, it's when, they, it's when they look at the uh, the underwear. <laughs> that, that's right. yeah. He's like, and then Matthew Bellavacco's like, "What'd you say?" <laughs> that's a crazy oh, scene. Man. Yeah, and the fact he's like, it's that zip Furio. He's like banging the shit out of that door. He's like, "Well, I'm in for a quick see, fucking You just see the fish lens, the fish eye lens, like that fucking people. <laughs> Good pick, Swan. Fucking great moment. I, I, yeah, great pick and great way to bring it in to explain it. It's so yeah. funny. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. So let's do our, our, our dump now here. Um, beef, uh, 
What do you? What do you? What, any uh, wise guys that uh, we didn't uh, talk about? Not yeah. So the only only two wise guys I got left on on, on my short list here were uh, Johnny Sacrimony and mm-hmm. Phil Leotardo. So I I, I love the New York. Uh, side of the uh, stories, and I, I I love Johnny Sack. He he was one of my favorites. Phil Leotardo was my favorite, like antagonist. Kind of later on, he was such a prick. You know, he comes back on the scene, and the first thing he does is he's he's got a telephone book on Lorraine, and he's shooting through it. And, you know, like that's like one of the initial scenes when he comes back out of jail. Did you see him? So those are the two wise guys that I that I got left. Twenty right fucking on. years, beef. <laughs> <laughs> Grilled his, cheese his, off the radiator. All right. His death is the best, and he gets run over by the car with like his grandkids are in the back seat. Like, that's fucking I sent you that bro. gift, and that guy's like, "Oh shit." <laughs> Yeah, that he, he was one of like the biggest assholes in a thing, well, uh, and it's a constant joke between Sopranos fans about the twenty years. <laughs> and I sent, I sent it to you guys in the chat earlier. He's like, "You look like a fucking Puerto Rican whore." I'm disgusted. By <laughs> There's no eating in the car. <laughs> yeah, but does he's eating? Uh, he was eating the fucking ice cream, ice cream but he <laughs> throws out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. ever since then, there's no eating in the car. There's no eating in the car, yeah. <laughs> and then, like the the thing with the the seat in the car is yeah, never it's on a tilt. Yeah, it's a skew. It's a skew. Pussy's and Joey gets in it. It's Joey. A skew, yeah. <laughs> the way okay. Joey Peeps gets in it's pretty hilarious too. <laughs> Joey Peeps. All right, now do you have any any wise guys that we forgot? I had Bobby on the list. I don't think he yeah. got picked. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby gotta add bobby like at first he's he so wasn't good. like much of anything but as, as he evolved like he was such a likable character and just like the stories you hear like like on the talking sopranos when they talked about when he comes in and he had the big dildo or whatever he <laughs> yeah, had the, the, that's that was the pine barons episode when he had the uh yeah. the orange uh, hunting coat on right when he had the big dildo <laughs> Yeah, look like fucking Elmer Fudd. Laugh or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of crazy how everybody's like, "Oh, Bobby was such a nice guy," like, and that's why everybody, you know, kind of felt bad for him. But in reality, Bobby was a fucking piece of shit too. Like, they all were killed yeah. people and yeah. scored them, and like, he's a bad dude too. But just because he kind of showed he was a little bit more human than the other ones, everybody like gravitated towards him. Well, they didn't well, show a lot tough. of his work. Only in that one episode where Janice is like, "Oh, you got to get out and do this thing," he goes into a bar and strong arms a fucking guy for a vote. In a union thing, like that was his thing, right? He's he's pushing on this guy to make sure this guy votes a different way than he wants to, like the, you know, for your well being sort of shit, you know, like so you see a little bit of it. They don't show a lot of it because they make him like uh, you know Junior's handler for most of it. Well, even uh, when he goes to collect from the uh, guy with the asbestos, he goes, "Don't bring, don't put that shit in the envelope." Like to tell you, know, I don't want like you can't right, show. No he doesn't give a fuck about yeah. He don't give a shit about like the people. Just put the money in the envelope. I don't want to get that shit. That's right. <laughs> Honestly, of all the deaths in that show, that one killed me the most. Yeah, when he got, when he got yeah. blown away in the the, the hobby shop, Blue you know? Comet buying a buying the Blue Comet, yeah, the blue co- yeah, yeah. But yeah, I he would was, probably that, have passed on buying a toy train if uh, everybody around me was getting killed, though. So I don't know why he was out doing that, but. <laughs> Treasy non-train guy. How oh, dare you know Treasy's just jealous that Steve Shriver follows me on Twitter. Fuck you, Treasy. Oh man, Treasy, I don't know. You know, Yumper, did you have anybody that would get picked? <laughs> Do it yeah. again, please. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite lines of when they're sitting there. He's like, Quasimodo, the freaking hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> um, I have a couple uh, for wise guys. Um, Tony Bludetto. Played yep. by Steve Buscemi. Yep. Uh, I loved him. I wish he would have stood along, around a little longer. Yeah. Boy, are you did. fat. Yeah, his <laughs> complete uh, asshole when they're playing cards. He tells uh, Vito, you know, um, those aren't candy bars. You can give us one of them, you know. You can hand them out. <laughs> like, he's a complete asshole, but totally smart and had balls to, like, take people out. Um, yeah, like he was a, a mean one, motherfucker. Totally. Uh, sure. Patsy was another one that I thought was done well. You know, you kind of f- see how he, I, I, I still think he's the one that kills Tony at the end due to, uh, not just for killing his brother, but because he's scared that Tony's going to kill him because Carl and his kid got pinched. But, you know, he plays two characters. He plays Patsy and um, Philly. It gets yeah, his yeah, brains blown out. But total asshole, you know, there's parts that are funny when Tony comes up to him and smacks the shit out of him for getting caught at the uh, rally. That cracks yeah. me up. 
Like those are two characters I thought that were, you know. And what about Patsy? Done. Comes in, he's gonna kill Tony when he's drunk when he has a gun, but he decides not to kill. Him. He just pisses <laughs> just in his pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and the, uh, Joey Peeps is another one that was in a, that's a kind of a minor character, but yep. it's pretty funny. Uh, like I said, when he does the thing with Phil in the car, cracked me up. And then Tony ends up Tony Blue Dead ends up taking him out. Uh, and just the gravestone. Peeps? Yeah, Peeps. Yes. <laughs> and then Sylvia's like, fucking Jason, he's dyslexic. He like, has to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we didn't really, I mean, we talked about Furio a few times, but we that was that was on my list. I probably would have taken him as a wild card if uh, if Richie April weren't there in, uh, in round four. Um, mm-hmm. Just that, the scene where he shakes down the, the massage parlor. Oh. Oh my God! He's like scoozy, scoozy, and he punches her in the face, and you're just like, "Oh my God!" Like this guy's a fucking monster. He's like shooting people in the knees. Yeah, he actually said that. Uh, I forget his Federico. I can't say his last name, but he actually said that that was the scene he auditioned with, and the Italian he really speaks wow. at the end, he added that in his audition. And David Chase said, asked him where he was from, and he's like, "Oh, I'm from. I think he's from Queens." And he's like, "Okay," and they add that in just for him to say it because David Chase liked it so much. And he's also his his he does a great accent, and then when you hear him talk for real, he sounds like a normal dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in my opinion, he's like shockingly violent. Like I like they go to Italy, they meet him, and he seems like he's you know he's kind of holding it down for the the uh, leader. He's like the almost like the second in command, basically covering up for the leadership and he's like the doing a lot of the talking. Yeah, he's kind of like he's the go between or whatever, and he's like real well kept and all that stuff. When he comes to the U.S., he's the violentest motherfucker you could possibly find, kicking the shit out of everyone. And then the fact that he's can't stop his lust for Carmella, and just uh, making it so obvious. I mean, the the scene where they're leaving the casino and they're getting the the helicopter, like oh my God. you know, that was a crazy scene. Like you were like, wait, is this going to happen? Like, is he really going to push Tony into this thing? Like, it was wild. You kind of get shade to that though, beef. In the, when they're in Italy, he beats the shit out of that kid for firecrackers. That's true. They do have that one that one scene where they're extra violent, and and Tony's like kind of surprised that oh, it's just a kid. Like what the fuck, you know? What the fuck, Vince? <laughs> we, we talked about that in our group thread. <laughs> or no, we talked about it on the one of my one of the advertisements for the show. Yeah, that's. A, <laughs> that's and then, Spo, did we miss any any wise guys? I don't know if we missed any wise guys. I I think like. Man, I'm looking at the draft board. Like, holy shit, is it such a fucking everyone from top to bottom has good picks. Yeah. Um, anybody can win this draft because everybody picked really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if there's any wise guys that we missed. Okay. I, I, I still had Benny on my list was the only one that was left, which is uh, uh, Benny. Vinny from Doogie oh, Hauser, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought he was he was a nice addition to the later seasons. Um, and then Svo, did you have any regular just day to day characters that we forgot? No, not day to day characters, but I do want to say I don't know how you guys feel, but the 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 moment that I got hooked on the show was the episode a guy walks into a psychiatrist's office. It's season two, episode one, and it opens up with when I was seventeen. And it's a montage of what's going on in the world. And, you know, Paulie's banging this stripper at the bot at the Bing. And um Melfi's doing um appointments out of her hotel. And it's just a very, very beautiful piece of TV. And it it's what got me hooked. And that's what I want to end my note on. Okay. Good stuff. Salvitro, um, man. Salvitro. Salvitro, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that poor take guy. Them. And no Feech Lamana. With no Feech yeah, Lamana. We didn't, we didn't um, talk about Feech at yeah. all. Loja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we talked about Zelman, uh, you know, as a everyday guy, but we didn't talk about Father uh, Intentola. Like he was, uh, he was on, early he was on, on my list. Yeah, yeah, early on, he was a big part of it. What know? did you guys play? Hide the Pope. <laughs> yeah, or even uh, Eli, um, Melfi's uh, Elliot, Melfi's a uh, psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was, was good. He, yeah, I mean, there's so many small. Like that's what I love about the show. There's so many characters that you can just branch out. Doctor that... Kuzamano was freaking yeah. hilarious. Kuz, yeah. Kuz, Kuz. Hold this for me. Um, and then I had Beansy, obviously. Uh, yep. Hash. We didn't really talk about Hash. Hash is That's a great character. Yeah. Um, who was the gangster rapper? What was his name that like tried to sue Hash? Oh, uh, 
I don't know. Genu- uh, no, I was gonna say genuine. Um, <laughs> that was a that was a good fucking massive hit. genius, massive yeah. genius, massive, massive genius. genius. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, that- and then we we didn't talk about Georgie either. The guy that the guy that runs the ball works in the. Works <laughs> oh in the my bing. goodness! Yeah, that would, guy's oh, fucking man. great. Four it took so much tender. fucking abuse. Right, he's yeah, digging but- up bodies under the under the fucking <laughs> viaduct with Christopher, <laughs> <laughs> throwing up all over the place. I'm gonna be like, sick. Oh, it's gross. I thought that was an urban legend. His hair is still growing. <laughs> yeah, uh, he gets fucking hit with Ralphie with the mace, and then he gets uh, yeah. then he Tony beats the shit out of him for using too much ice or wasting <laughs> ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Georgie, poor guy. Georgie. Uh, and then any Gumars that we didn't if wives or Gumars? Uh, the the uh, Russian, uh, not uh, not um. Well, we talk kind of talking about uh, Arena. We talked about her. She kind of played a pivotal role with, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, yep. starting off with the uh, basic fucking with Tony, and then basically tries to kill herself. Yeah. And then actually, uh, hat. Another guy who is kind of a Gumar, but he's a guy, and it's uh, David Strem, who's uh, Carmela's, it's uh, AJ's principal. Oh who, yeah, she oh, falls yeah. in love yep. with. Yep, um, yep. Mr. Good Wexler. call. Yeah, so basically, you know. Kind really of good in that. Gets, yeah, he gets scared off and realizes, you know, that he was kind of helping making helping AJ get past school. You know, he dumped yeah. he, she ends up dumping her. Yeah. Yeah, that's a um, great call. One one last one I had on my list, and she was only on one episode, but the episode with Fran Felstein is so hilarious with the old lady oh, that was yeah. Tony's yes. that was Tony's uh Tony's oh, little Gumar. Oh my hat. god, it yeah. Was, it was Johnny's, uh, Johnny's Guma. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Johnny's, I mean, yeah. And she wears the JFK hat. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. It's they so met, creepy. They met at the cemetery. Yeah. And she and she wanted to get her money from the, the, it's gonna the piece racing, of the racetrack. The racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Hesh is pissed. Hesh doesn't like her, and he's like, I've been well, who do you think's been filing tax returns for this fucking thing all these years? <laughs> 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 he's so pissed. Yeah, I, I, the only the only ones I had left were uh, Svetlana, which we talked about, and then Angie Bompensero because Ooh. Big Pussy dies. She's like trying to shake Tony down for money, and eventually she becomes like one of the gangsters. She's yeah. running the fucking shop. She's got money on the street. Yeah, she's out there doing shit. You know, it's kind of weird uh, turn there. Yeah, even Carmela becomes envious of her because she basically yep. went down and came back up, and now she runs her own shit. I think that's what kind of convinced Carmela to do the housing stuff. We I think you're about, right, Brian. Yeah. We talked a little bit about her with uh, with Ralphie, but also Rosalia Prio too. Like, mm-hmm. she goes to Italy with Carmela, and she plays a big role in the show. Yeah, Ro. Hundred percent. Yep. I, I I mentioned her already, but I really like Silvio's wife. She wasn't in it a ton, but uh, she always she always kind of seemed like the voice of reason among like the wives. Like she. She went after the the priest when they had the 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 the, uh, the person that talked about organized crime in at the church. Yeah, yes, you know so she's like, I'm pissed. I'm pissed off, man. Don't. This is not right. Like, I'm they, gonna we tell give him you off. A lot of, we give you a lot of fucking money, and you you know. So <laughs> I, right. I thought she was tough. She always yeah, like, and I she I I kind of feel like she should have been in the show a little more. Yeah, the character I thought that should have been in the show a little more just to show like how she kind of ended up normal was Barbara. Which is the other sister of Tony? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I know it's more focused heavy on Tony and Janice because there's a good storyline there. But it kind of been cool to show like she's the normal one of them. So yeah. I wish they would have showed her a little more. Um, Jenny Kosumoto, like when she uh, doesn't want to recommend Meadow to yes. the fucking Carmela Strong Arms with I and like lasagna. What's your daughter's name? Fielder. Fielder. <laughs> Fielder. <laughs> oh man. Um, so we didn't talk about. So let's take a couple of minutes before we wrap up and talk about the the family. Um, any any memories, Meadow and AJ, that you guys uh, want to mention before we uh, we wrap up? With just in general, just AJ and a- AJ and Meadow stuff. Because we really didn't. We really. Didn't, I thought it was. I thought we were going to talk about them throughout the conversation, but we really didn't. So. AJ yeah, I think is a terrible character. <laughs> what? I, I mean, I mean, he's a huge I prick, but uh, I mean, he uh, is. I get the, I get the AJ hatred, so I'm not 
disagreeing with mom but in the later the later episodes of the later seasons um you know once again before it was a thing they started talking about like you know mental health mental and health, how yeah. aj was depressed and yeah. you know he tried to kill himself in the pool and um i, I thought that storyline with uh what was his girlfriend's name blanca blanca i thought that was a really good really good storyline and and um Meadow had some great like love interest too, like uh, uh, Jackie. Finn. Finn was good, but also the the black boyfriend that Tony was like not very nice to Noah. Noah, Noah yeah, Noah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and he wasn't very nice to, to Meadow either, so that was the funny part. Yeah, he was mad. At yeah, he was a jerk. Paper. Yeah, <laughs> he kind of he kind of stepped away for for superficial reasons. Um, but the AJ and uh. Metal, I like the play they play, but like you said, AJ was like, you really thought he was a brat, but then, like, so you hit on the head with the mental health aspect, and then even, like, you see how much he cares about his dad when he tries to go kill Junior, but he can't go through with it. He can't go through with it. And Tony, uh, Tony calls him an idiot, but then realizes, you know, he loves him, because he says, one, I can't leave him in there for what he did to you. Like The one cringe moment was was AJ at the Puerto Rican Independence Day parade, like, <laughs> singing along with the music, and it was, like, it was bad. It was not good. My favorite AJ <laughs> moments when uh him and Metal Metal covers for him when he goes to that to go drink at the, the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> he his eyebrows. Eyebrows. <laughs> eyebrows. When Tony tells him, uh, he gets his face glued to the yeah. floor. <laughs> when Tony sees him, he's like, "What's different about you?" And he's like, "Yeah, no eyebrows, Tony." And he's like, "He's like, what's up there with the weird sex stuff, gay poppers?" And he's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> it's garbage day. Yeah. The trash. Yeah. I, see some, I see some love for Jackie Jr. in the um the chat, and I think Jackie Jr. was a little bitch. Like, I do too. Shit. Jackie yeah. Jr. was a little bitch. Jackie was uh basically like they even said it, my brother um wanted so hard to be my dad, but he couldn't be it. And he pissed in the seat during the uh jewel concert. Yeah, that's right. Oh, when yeah. he was the driver. You remember that? Yeah, he pissed in the seat. Yeah, he was. He wanted to be a tough guy like that, but he was too fucking stupid to he do it. He wasn't cut out for it. He yeah. couldn't execute it. Like he wasn't tough enough, but he also wasn't smart enough either. He was too stupid to to like be in those roles. Like he, <laughs> he just couldn't do it. Like couldn't could not execute Junior, any of that. Junior is lying. He's like, didn't he fucking almost drown in a puddle? <laughs> <laughs> and then he had to go um, shack up with Omar from the wire. Yeah, he was a good Scrabble um, player though. He was a good Scrabble player. Boom. Now, converse, Boom. conversely, li, li, little Car conversely, <laughs> little Carmine was really stupid, but an excellent character, in my opinion. That's yes. messed out. He has, uh, he has yes. over thirty oh, movies on his subspecies. Little <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, the way he built the dialogue for that character, or where they they built the dialogue for that character, is tremendous. His yeah. vernacular was insane. Yeah, I just loved it. I I almost asked if you guys would allow me to just draft the movie Cleaver as my episode. <laughs> you should. That should have been your wild card. That would have been I a great up, one. I picked up at the club. You could have drafted Cleaver. That's another character that we missed. Uh, JT, the writer. Yeah. Christopher treated oh him yeah. Like yeah, that's oh. right. He shook yeah. him down too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good gambling. Uh, this, like I said, this show has like Terrence Winter and David Chase did a great job. That's why Beef, I'm trying to get you to watch Boardwalk Empire. Because Terrence Winter actually wrote most of it. Oh, Beef, okay. you haven't watched Boardwalk? Yeah. Yeah. I've only seen a few episodes of it. I, I, I only got, I haven't I only got through it. like the first season myself. So. It starts off slow, but it picks up and it's yeah. good. And what's his name? He was in The Irishman. Uh, don't say a word, Beef, about The Irishman. Um, uh, <laughs> he, he, he was he played Capone in uh, uh, Boardwalk. What's Stephen Graham. Stephen, Stephen Graham. Graham. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. He's he's terrific in the. Action. I was watching a couple of scenes before uh, before we were doing this because I always get pulled into that rabbit hole. But Michael Shannon's uh, portrayal of Nelson Van Leet, you're you should like his. It's awesome. Like his character is awesome throughout that show. All right. I gotta commit to this. I gotta <laughs> I gotta do this. I gotta sit down and do it. I feel like you'll really like it. Mm -hmm. So one thing we have to decide before we uh, log off here. Um, so I have to split this. You know, I always do a poll afterwards. I can't put five people in a poll, so I got to do two polls. Should we do? Uh, should we do Svo versus King Nam, and then the three of us? I honestly, I think, honestly, I don't care what you do. I think everybody won this draft. This was yeah. a fun episode. I, I, yeah. I can't. I, I can't. I can't look. I look at it. And I'm like nobody. Nobody. Uh, nobody lost this one. So. This has been, yeah, this uh, is like yeah, this one is of the strong one. 
I got to talk Sopranos all day. I know again. we we could stretch <laughs> we could stretch this into like a five hour show if we, we really could. To. We should do that for Noms. noms and if there wasn't if there yeah, wasn't exactly. snow coming, if there wasn't snow coming, we'd keep Nom longer. Nom's already awake for tomorrow. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You just ate breakfast. What the fuck? <laughs> so I got my cannolis waiting. <laughs> boy. Well, guys, yeah. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I uh, want to thank all of you for being on. Uh, real quick, if you guys would each like to uh, t- to do some pluggy plugs. Beef loaf? Uh, sure. Happy to plug. Uh, the 108 podcast is Thursday nights, uh, 8 p.m. Central Time on YouTube. That's uh, YouTube backslash from the 108. I also have uh, a solo podcast that I do on Monday nights, 6 p.m. Central Time. It's called The Aju. It's more baseball-centric than the uh, the 108 is. And then just go to from the 108com for blogs and videos and all kinds of bullshit. Uh, uh, thanks for having me on, Brian. really love it. Right on, dude. Thank you. Anytime you want to come on with any of these, please, please, please let me know. Um, yeah, I, 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 you guys, you guys par- partially, one of the reasons I started a podcast is because i like watching you guys i see all the fun you guys have every week so um thank you i appreciate that compliment brian thank you no problem um all right yumper swo what do you got for us uh yeah uh follow us at yumper and swo on twitter uh i'm at little yumper and swo is at doughboy swo uh next this sunday we actually got a show coming out with a battle of steven seagull versus um John Claude Van Damme. And we're going to go through those movies and see which we have movies pairs and we're going to talk about which one and we decide which one was the better one. And then February 18th at the Relish Room with the Chicago Sports Bums, we're doing a Chicago movie podcast uh, at the Wiener Circle. Uh, and afterwards, we're going to the Berwyn Tap across the street for some drinks. So make sure you guys are there for that and hang out with us. And I will be there and I will buy you a drink if you show up. <laughs> oh, also, get... so did anybody uh, email, uh, message you for the pack no one's rsvp'd we got a little gift prize coming out um if you rsvp and you come out and hang out with us um and uh for three people more right three people or more and um if you need me i'll be over here with no shirt on and watching a muppet christmas carol (laughs) sweet can i can i rsvp like you guys are my other two (laughs) absolutely right on but uh all right again thank you again for uh, king nam coming on um you can see King Nam at the ballpark all summer, right? Yep. I'll be making Rooting my for the Eagles. I had, a, I had a poor fuck off. See that? I was actually. <laughs> on the I wanted on record official prediction Sunday, Niners 31, Eagles 20, hammer the Niners money line. It's as good as going. You know, why is he wow. more predicted all this? <laughs> Yes. Do you have like a do you have like a giant lock with you and you're like this is my lock of the week? Yeah. Right on. Well, you can uh, you can always follow this show at at Getting Drafty Pod. I am uh, on Twitter as at Magnificent Stan. Uh, we are on uh, on the YouTubes as well as Spotify, Apple Pods, everywhere. Um, I also am doing uh, bi-weekly uh, wrestling shows on Playback, on my Playback channel. We're going to be watching wrestling. And also, uh, we came across last week the uh, the show Power Slap, where people just slap the shit out of each other. And uh, we'll watch that until the government shuts it down for being too damn violent. Um, you can also check out our uh, our fancy uh, uh, merch at the uh, on our Etsy site, Etsy slash, uh, etsy.com slash the Tainted Glove. Uh, buy some shirts, buy some sweatshirts, buy some fancy hats. So again, this is uh, Brian. Tank Thank tops. Stan. Tank tops. Oh yeah, tank top with Smo's face on it. Yeah, you gotta buy that. But uh, but all right, guys. Thank you very much again, and uh, and I'll be back in a couple of weeks with another another episode. Take care. I picked the wrong one. <laughs>